okay can you see can you see the presentation yes we do okay so today we are going to talk about uh, regulating new technologies and uh, regulating new technologies as the word regulating and uh, one of our colleague was talking about uh, reg tech is uh, also the uh, relevant topic but we will discuss it tomorrow but uh, wherever we have uh, the question of uh, regulations or rules it's mean we are talking about law so regulating new technologies uh, regulating new technologies is not always easy because uh, it everything which we want to regulate it tends to retaliate and uh, when there are retaliations we talk about challenges so when we talk about regulating new innovative technologies basically we are talking about uh, challenges because this process is not smooth so i want to share a story with you this person his name is uh, jing he if you will go on youtube you will find many documentaries about uh, this person uh, he was a famous chinese martial chinese uh, uh, martial in uh, uh, 14th century and he was a military man he was very fond of uh, sea voyages he wanted to uh, you know travel around the world like uh, christopher columbus and he requested from the king to give him money so that he can build his uh, ship and uh, the king actually gave him money and he made uh, big big ships and he started his uh, sea voyage so he traveled from uh, china and then he went to certain part of uh, you know um, uh, asia and even he went to middle east and africa and then he came back to china and when he came back to china the king asked him that what you brought for me from the world i mean i had spent a lot of money and i have given you the ships and you have now returned back what you have brought for me and he said that i brought for you this giraffe so the king became very angry that i have spent so much money and in return you are bringing this giraffe and uh, the conclusion of this story is that apparently the china has everything and china had everything at that point so the chinese didn't find anything new in the whole world so this marshal when he returned he brought the giraffe did you understand yes 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 i mean i mean sometimes sometimes you spend a lot of money on something which seems very interesting but at the end you get nothing in result i mean they spend uh, billions of dollars at that time if we say to travel around the world and when they returned when the when the when the marshal came and the king asked him that what you brought for me something new did you brought any gift from me uh, from the world for me and he brought this giraffe because this was the only thing which uh, was not present in china at that time so that's why the the moral of the story is that sometimes you spend a lot of money on something which doesn't benefit you that's why when you are about to spend money you should make rules and regulations you should set your standards and preferences you should decide what you need and what you don't so that in the long run you shouldn't regret on your time stamina and energy which you have spent on something so that's why whenever we talk about technology we talk about money because technology costs money so the challenge is that are we willing to spend our money on something which is not tangible we are not sure about the future so the investment which we are going to do on technology does it worth our investment or not and the answer is we don't know 
So if we don't know what we can do, we can make rules and regulations. We can make regulations. We can set, set our standards and preferences and let others decide. So this is the China. Then the Britishers the came in China. Is there any question who is speaking? Uh, who is, who, is there any question? No. Okay. So this is the China once again when the Britishers came and uh, Britishers started buying everything from Chinese. They were taking everything from China and in return what they were doing, they were giving them opium. Do you know what is opium? Opium. Yes, strong. This uh, is a drug. Okay. Yeah, strong drug. Okay. I can hear uh, Natalia now. So they were buying everything from, uh, from uh, Chinese and in return, what they were giving them, they were giving them opium. And the whole China became uh, narcoman. And uh, the price of everything, it was opium. And then you know what happened? The interesting thing is when the Chinese realized that they are robbing us, I mean, they are taking everything from us and in return, what they are giving us, they are giving us opium. They said that, no, we don't want to do trade with you. So the Chinese rejected trade with the Britishers. And then what happened? Britishers became angry and then there were certain wars with the Chinese. So, I mean, I mean, it is like uh, you are robbing someone and then you are bullying someone. So that when the Britishers saw that, now they cannot buy everything from Chinese in return of opium, they imposed wars on them. Isn't it interesting? The point which yes. I'm trying to make, the point which I'm trying to make is that technology is like opium. We are enjoying and we are buying everything what the others are giving us on the name of technology and they are taking everything from us in exchange of technology because we are very much excited about technology. We don't know what are the pros and cons of technology. We think that the technology is always useful or beneficial for us, for our people, for our country. But uh, many people like me, sometimes think that technology is opium and all the technologies are not useful for mankind. Or you can say that the money, the price which exporters of technologies are demanding from us is not equal to the benefits or the results which technologies are yielding. Okay? So this was in this way. In this way, why to invent these technologies? Sorry. Why to, in this way? Why to invent these technologies? Why to create them? Yes, I. If not I, of I, them. I mentioned in the first part that uh, technology is commodity, like many other things, and it is like opium that. Uh, some people make opium and then they make other people addict of this so that they can make profit out of it. At present, at present, uh, at this time, I have, I have, uh, like, uh, on my, on my desk, on my table, I have uh, three laptops and three mobile phones. And a couple of years ago, I could survive without any of these things. I, I have this Samsung and I, I have this MacBook and uh, I have Samsung mobile phones and, and I don't need them. But I, I, when something is missing, I feel that something is missing. It is like my mobile phone is like my hand. And if it is not in my hand, I feel that something is missing. It means that I am addicted to this. And all those races of uh, iPhone 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and people start waiting after buying I self, I, iPhone 12 Pro, they start waiting iPhone 13. So it is, it is addiction. 
the people who are making money in from from this definitely they will invest more and more uh, into into this business so for some people it is beneficial and for some other people it is not so uh, are you are you still with me or is it is it very boring no i still oh, here it's interesting <laughs> yeah follow okay. <laughs> okay so uh, you know actually your lectures are one of the most interesting we have okay so we're so, very slava, excited slava, to hear you. slava bogu yes <laughs> okay. ever before I, I am just trying to do something with my, uh, you know, video. I cannot see myself. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, we see you. Oh, and yeah, very clearly. But I, why, I, don't, I don't know why I cannot see myself. I should see myself as well, yes? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. So, you are handsome, don't worry. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes. I would, I would like to listen it from some girls. But uh, now I'm I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you the theoretical background, jurisprudencia, legal philosophy, and uh, stay attentive because um, whenever we talk about philosophy, people start sleeping. Okay, so vnimania. Has any one of you heard about social contract theory? Social contract theory. Yes. Yes. No, I Hobbes, haven't. Hobbes, Log, no, Rousseau. Uh, Rousseau. Yes, in Uzbek. Yes, in Uzbek. Yes. 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 So what did Hobbes said that? Hobbes said that the life is uh, very difficult and people, they do uh, the trade of rights, means they give some of their rights in order to claim some of their rights. Yes. So when yes. you give some of your rights, you claim some of your rights, and then there is a balance, which is called as a social contract. So this social contract is something which is the essence of our peace. If we don't have this social contract, there will be chaos, and this is called as state of nature. So Hobbes says that it was Vaina. And if you come out of the war, how you can come out of the war? You can come out of the war only if you make contract. And what sort of contract is this? I Means some people, they become leader and some people, they become ordinary populates. And they do a contract among themselves. And this is called as social contract. And then you survive. So the point is that... Uh, there are there are different types of powers we know that yes executive judges people so all of these things they should be balanced means they should have equal rights and responsibilities so that one part of the government or one part of the society should not dominate on the other parts okay it's mean that there should be a balance there should be a social contract uh, but uh, if the social contract disturbs, uh, I mean, one party gains more rights, uh, one party gains more power, the other party protests, the other party has reservations, the other party makes its claim and calls for the balance. For example, in many political systems, uh, when people think that the saturation of power is among the hands of uh, certain people, they make rights. They come out of streets and they protest. So we say that the balance of power has disturbed. There is a terminology which is called as balance of power. So balance of power is disturbed. What does it mean? It's mean our social contract is disturbed. So and same things happen in different contexts. People protest against people. People, countries protest against countries and disturb the global social contract. And uh, if the social contract fails, people separate and uh, we see different types of divisions. For example, in the modern history, you have heard about the Catalonia, yes? Catalonia separated from Spain. So what happened? The social contract between the Catalonians and uh, uh, the Spanish people uh, disturbed and they got separated from the Spain. 
yes in hong kong you have seen that many people are protesting against the chinese and they are saying that we are not in the favor of uh, the social contract which china wants to impose on us we don't want to give our rights in order to claim our rights in the favor of chinese so they are protesting against a social contract which is being proposed by uh, uh, another party in this case of hong kong it is chinese so what the point is that i am saying that uh, oil oil is a commodity and there there are certain wars in our modern history which happened because of the oil you know yes 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 iran syria iran syria afghanistan or in whole of the middle east so oil oil apparently nift is something we cannot think about can cause the war but oil as a commodity has potential to cause the disturbance to our social contract and ultimately it has the potential to start wars yes 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 ludi vayut is a nift and there is was mojnas that in future if you will not control the technology because technology is becoming commodity there are certain countries which has monopolies on certain technologies for which people are very emotional for example iphone comes from certain part of the world samsung come from a certain part of the world and ikea furniture for example is also technology come from a single part of the world or any other technology is is the property of certain country so there is a possibility that in future technology will act as a commodity which has a potential to cause wars drones you know drones drones fighter killer jets there are certain countries in the country in, in, in our world which makes these fighter jets the russian makes uh, mig aircrafts the the china the, the french make uh, rafael yes chinese make jf17 so in future there is a possibility that technology will act as oil and people will be fighting on on these sort of technologies like they are fighting right now on the name of oil panyatna yes so data is the new oil have you heard about it data is the new oil previously whoever controlled data no one cared but today data is very powerful data is very strong i mean in terms of uh, its uh, uh, dimensions in which dimensions it can be used so data is acting like oil if you have big 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 chunks of data if you have dominance on data it's mean that you are rich for example for example uh, near the tashkent state university of law there is a kfc new kfc yes yes so do you samadar knows very good about kfc <laughs> who knows about it i i i know about it i know okay let's always have this student so kfc the, the the thing is that the kfc kfc will be very much interested in buying data from uh, tashkent state university of law about students means if tashkent state university of law installs a system on the door on the door of uh, the university this fingerprinting doors if you want to enter in the university you need to give your fingerprint if you want to come out you need to give your fingerprint and this data will be recorded 
This data will be very helpful for KFC to analyze that how many students every day leave the university at the time of lunch and how many students eat inside the university and by using this data they can do their marketing analysis they can make their products they can offer you a number of services yes 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 so this data is very useful and data can be used in number of dimension and, and this was just a small example to tell you that how someone can make money out of it but this is this is uh, uh, even interesting that you can even make money from your DNA, D D DNK. Yes, you know about DNA. Yes. But who provides who provides this data regarding fingerprints to KFC? Our university who will provide this data? Uh, this is this this example I gave that. Uh, the data is important for some people, those types of data which are not important for other people. For example, Tashkent State University of Law, uh, for them, this data is not important. And for KFC, it is very important, yes? They can buy this data, they can hack this data, they can request this data, but this data is very helpful for them. Similarly, the countries, countries, they are very much interested in buying any sort of data from anyone. Uh, because it is very helpful for them to do different types of analysis. So in future, uh, data will be a very useful commodity. It is a commodity right now. Those people who have some information about marketing, they know that how much important this data is. Kajdi Rast, the Daje restaurant, Sprashivayat, feedback. Why they need feedback? Because they are making their data bank and based on this data bank, they will make new food. They will offer you new services. So any sort, we are producing data. I mean, we are walking. I am talking to you. I am recording this. It is production of data. We are, we are, we are like uh, on daily basis, we are doing tons of, uh, uh, you know, data. So this uh, data, this data is uh, helpful for one party, even it is not helpful for other. So you can make money from your DNA. I mean, there are people who are interested in buying, uh, in buying uh, your DNA. You can, uh, you can simply, simply upload it on certain websites. You can do the privacy setting. There are people who are interested in buying your information about your DNA and you can make money out of it. You know, previously people, Bedni uh, Studenti, they used to sell their bloods. I don't know if it is it is a common practice in Central Asia, but in European countries or in many other countries, the the poor poor students they used to sell you know the blood uh, to make money. So similarly, similarly, if you can make money out of your DNA, and apparently DNA is not something which is important for us. I mean, I mean, I don't care about my DNA, but for some people, it is very helpful. How it can be helpful, your DNA, how it can be helpful for someone? Can you, can you think about any example? Yes, uh, may I ask for the question? Uh, I think, for example, uh, cultures or uh, nations has, uh, people in the same nations has something in common for example, Chinese, for example, Africans. And when you have a, a DNA and when you find out uh, uh, that similar DNA, you can make uh, some biological weapon that will only eliminate that culture, that nation. Uh, yes. For example, if you find out uh, something in common in the DNA of Chinese people, you may uh, make some uh, biological weapon that will kill only Chinese people and so like. I think yes, that's yes. why uh, government interest in the name. Yes, you are you are absolutely right uh, about this thing. Uh, it is it is uh, something which which is very uh, which is a negative example. The good example can be in uh, COVID nineteen, for example. The companies they are located in uh, UK, in China, in Russia. They don't know that how this uh, uh, vaccine is going to impact on on Central Asian people. So in this case, they need volunteers on which they can do experiments. Similarly, it happens with the, uh, your data for, uh, coming from your DNA. Okay. So 
If we talk about growth of technologies, uh, how many types of technologies we have over the period of time, you can look at this map and you can see that in the last thousand years, there were an exponential growth in terms of any sort of uh, technologies, yes. And this is a graphical representation of it. But uh, I will I will come back to the three questions which I posed in the in the final slide of my previous uh, lecture. And I want to know your feedback before proceeding. That what are your first uh, you know responses related to these questions? That how we can use law to incentivize new technologies. Because until now, we are talking about that how to restrict technologies, but the purpose of this course is that we need to use law to incentivize new technologies. How we can do this? Because whenever we say about regulations, whenever we say about law, we are basically talking about restrictions. Yes? Hmm? Yes, yes. I, I told you that the legal philosophy is boring and you should stay alive. <laughs> okay. May I answer to that question? Yes, yes, please. Uh, okay, as I uh, said in the previous lesson, I think we should uh, find, we should impart uh, some kind of laws which will uh, help to uh, investors uh, from the monetary aspect. I mean, we should uh, make uh, some... Uh, how to say it? Nalogo uh, ligote. We should give them some privileges for paying taxes. Their taxes. Also, we should uh, have to say uh, engage some investors from the outside and make them uh, clear, understandable laws. For example, I think uh, our laws are so uh, rigid. Yes. 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 Rigid for them. That's why we should okay. uh, make them more easy. Okay, okay. Anyone else? Anyone else wants to comment on this? I agree with the opinion of Sami. <laughs> okay. Maybe we also should avoid some uh, moral ideas. I mean, uh, regarding um, cl um, cleaning. How to do cleaning in English? How to do what? Guys, who knows? What? Who knows? Just a second. I'll use a dictionary to translate this word. Just a second. Uzbek anything? Cloning. Okay. Cloning. I mean, uh, in cloning. some countries, cloning is prohibited. Yes, cloning. Cloning, yes, cloning. cloning. Yeah, when we make cloning means you take cell one cell and then you make multiple copies of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So wow. uh, these are. Uh, the moral ideas, and I know that in many countries it is prohibited. But if we um, overstep some of these ideas, we could um, we could bust the okay, am, new I technologies. Understand. Yes. So I showed you this graph that we have laws, and we want to encourage innovations. And uh, we want to encourage innovations and we want to regulate laws, but there are, there are three big questions related to incentivizing technologies. First question is that why we need to incentivize? I mean, why we need to encourage Vabshe? Why we need uh, drones or fighter jets or tanks or all of these things, yes? And then, because why we of the pro because of the progress will live better maybe it will to go make, in negative to make our everyday life easier maybe it will make difficult i had right. this mobile phone i had this mobile phone and uh, i i am charging it i am charging it with a very long cable very long cable because the small cable is not enough and I also have a power bank. It is also technology. And at the same time, I am charging mobile phone and I am charging power bank. And I have two to three, three cables in my office. And sometimes when I think just as a human, I feel that I am dying under the burden of these technologies. Have you, have you ever went to ICU 
ICU in intensive care unit, intensive care unit. Do you know about this? No, I don't know. In hospital, in the hospital, when uh, someone is about to die, the doctors put, you know, oxygen and there are number of uh, yes, 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 and, we know it. Yes? Yeah, yeah, we know it, but in English, I didn't know it. It is it, this this area is called as intensive care unit, and and how many cables are on my on my you know in my surroundings, are attached to you know very next to to my fingers. I feel that I am in intensive care unit or I am on life support, and if if these cables will be away from me, I will die. Have you ever thought like this? But, uh, but uh, <laughs> there are not not only such kind of innovations. There are also uh, such kind of innovation which, uh, how to say, uh, saves the environment. For example, electronic cars or uh, water cleaning machines and etc. I think it's also technology and it's also innovation. Okay. From that side, I think we should encourage uh, innovation because it will help. Uh, not only for the uh, humankind, but also for the environment. Okay, good. And besides, and you may substitute some wires via, you, you can substitute some wires via Bluetooth, for example. <laughs> then there is another problem, Bluetooth rays and all these, uh, you know, radio radioactive uh, uh, energies and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, anyways, I made my point clear that... Uh, the technologies sometimes we think that are beneficial, but uh, they are not, or they are beneficial, but uh, we are not ready at this point to truly uh, get benefit from their benefits. So yes, the other question I... is what, what, uh, what and when the state becomes conscious or when we require state intervention to stimulate innovations. It happened at a number of times. For example, there is a movie on YouTube about making Kalashnikov. Have you saw this movie? That how this person uh, designed the Kalashnikov AK-47, the Russian made. And there are a number of others, you know, movies on YouTube you can watch that how the state intervenes and promotes certain type of innovations. In Uzbekistan, for example, IT parks are the one million coders that Uzbek governments want that we want to teach coding in all schools and colleges and universities. And we need one million coders. It's mean that the state has realized the true benefits of the technology and it has a planning and it wants the technology to reach in every house. And they have come up with an idea of this one million coders. So it is very difficult for a technologist. It is very difficult for a technologist to make government realize the importance of its invention. For example, tomorrow, if you make something new, if you invent something, for example, if you make something in mobile programs, if you make something in terms of uh, computers, you go to the government and ask money, no one will listen to you. Yes? No one will give you money. But on the other hand, if government makes its mind that they need new mobile programs, yes, they will issue advertisements. Take credit for business. Yes, they will recruit people. So the point which I'm trying to make is that which uh, the Samandar also mentioned that uh, it, is, it is very difficult to realize the government that this type of technology is beneficial. That's why you need to invest money. But this is very important point for innovation perspective and from the technology law perspective. Because if government will invest money, pay attention to this. Tolka yesli gasugarstva budit investiravat tolka tagda Nam Panadabisa Zdelat Novizukon. Yes. 
So you make technologies, you are doing everything in your homes, no one cares about it, yes, until you make a big bomb and there is a bomb <laughs> and, and governments realize that you have done something wrong. <laughs> so if you want to make regulations about a technology, you should force Gasugarstwa to invest money into that. Because if state will be at stake, if state's money will be at stake, then the laws making process will be easy. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, because state itself is interested in the yeah, state That's is a stakeholder. Will, state yes, 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 yes. So it is also it, Lego, and yes. it's uh, it gets easier to people to realize. That's why, that's why there are many technologies which are dangerous, but government doesn't care because government is not a stakeholder. Huh? Government yeah. don't care because they haven't invested money. And this technology is, this technology is not disturbing anyone. But in the long run, it can be dangerous. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So super intelligence, once again, machine super intelligence will be the last invention humans will need to make. And this person died recently. Stephen Hawking said the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Means he was not positive about artificial intelligence. And this is my friend, a friend of all of us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, development of AI may be the biggest existential threat humanity faces <laughs> and you know nowadays what he is doing I don't know if you are following this case he is implanting chips inside the mind and yes I heard about you, you, you heard why, why so that you can digitally operate you can listen music inside your brain you can watch movies inside your brain oh my you god you can google it instantly and so like what is happening yes. i've heard only about mars oh it is it is nothing i mean mars you know basically we have a topic about uh, space law yes it is it is uh, the fourth lecture is it, fourth is it lecture. possible to set up a chip on a mind well, of course yes, of if it course. if he is doing it's mean it is possible <laughs> I know the technologies uh, for the blind people, they implant some kind of uh, neuro uh, robots into the mind and uh, blind people could see the world. It's already done. Yes, take it technology. Okay. Has he already tried it in his own head? Why he should try when there are many people like you and me who are very much interested in buying this and experimenting with ourselves. Have you, have you thought about the rays which uh, are coming out of the mobile phones, how dangerous they are? We don't care, but they are dangerous, you know? Yeah, they can uh, motivate the cancer. Yes. Anyways, the f are you still with me or it is too much philosophy? No, yeah. no it's interesting. It's interesting. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, different or uh, different audiences, they have different taste towards the jurisprudence. <laughs> Means certain <laughs> students, they are, uh, when, whenever you go a little bit into philosophy, they turn off their switch and they sleep. <laughs> yes, it is, called, it is, it is a experience. I mean, uh, certain people, certain lawyers, they have taste for legal philosophy and jurisprudence. So that's why I am, I am just evaluating if you are following or not. Because if I will go in too much philosophy and you are not following, you will lose your interest and then it will be difficult for you to follow. Anyways, anyways, Vunimania Ishuras. The fate of chimpanzees depends on humans. The fate of humans will be dependent on machines. What are the preferences or objectives of AI? How do we make sure that AI reflects our values? How do we ensure that the objectives are not misconceived or poorly specified? 
how do we control the ai what happens if uh, it gets out of control so these are these are common questions these are if you talk about ai or technology everyone will ask you something which is related to one of these four dom domains so you as a technology law expert must have answer or at least some thinking or at least some idea about these four questions whenever you think about technology and the societal impact of technology or ai or the life of people in the uh, era of new emerging technologies you must have answer to these four questions or you should have some understanding or you should have your own position at least Okay, the so more we listen to you, the more uh, scary yes. it looks. Hmm? What did you say? Sorry. The more we listen to you, the hmm. more we listen to you, the uh, more scary it seems. Like. Okay. <laughs> so you you want to ban my classes? Yes, you want that Sledushir Asmini ani pazwali da ani Sledushim semestre because I am asking. <laughs> I am forcing you to think. No, we just no, we just no, we just uh, start to think more precisely about this and yes, yes, the to pay attention and we develop this idea and it's you know like in Terminator for example. Yes, <laughs> just yes. like this. Yes, yes. When the COVID was there, the COVID was there and there was lockdown inside inside uh, Tashkent and you know I was living near Ibek Metro. And in near the Ibek Metro, in front of my house, uh, in the Protiv Mayova Doma, there was uh, this uh, these police officers who used to stay there for 24 hours. And the street, the main street, uh, I mean, from Ibek Metro, it was so much silent. And I was thinking that yani budu terminatiri vidut because the situation was like this, that anything could could come out from anywhere. Yes. So we yes. maybe maybe in future maybe in fu I don't know if there is second wave of coronavirus going inside your country or not. But in Pakistan, the second wave is going, and I am thinking that in near future they will do a even more strict lockdown. Yes. So anything is anything is possible. But now yes. I want I will give you two minutes two minutes to think. We have fourteen students fourteen students. And I want to listen one line from all of you about this second question. Okay, I will give you two minutes. Think about this second question and give me your opinion. Don't, don't worry about the groups. Just think about your own opinion. That if you have an opportunity to advise the leader of the world's government, what one thing would you urge them to do now? Why? How responsive in this one measure to your principal concern, your own principal concern? That why it is your principal, you know, position. Okay. So just take two minutes, think about this, and come up with the reason and tell me. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, you can start. Um, I would uh, I would ask them to sing very deliberately and precisely and uh, like in chess try to predict all possible variants or uh, everything that could it is it is very broad happen, you know like it is too too broad that's why i said just one specific thing to you want them to do this 
because you if you will say that i want them to think and i want it, it they are already thinking one specific thing you should ask them do this please i have a question yes uh, in what terms uh, we should uh, give our opinion to this regulations law Ah, is it dependent on the the question? Suppose superintendent. No, I make I make this context. These are the reservations. These can be the problems. Yes, these ah. are the challenges of the technology. And to etwa ya gwaril that gasugarstwa should be stakeholders. Only then they will make law. Yes, did you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I am, realize. I am contextualizing everything. That's why I said philosophy is boring and you have to be very attentive about it. So yeah. I up till now, I up till now I have made some philosophical questions. I have told you that philosophy can disturb the social contract. Sorry, technology can disturb the social contract. Because of technologies, there can be vainas. Then I told you that. why the state should be a stakeholder and then i talked about what are some of the issues related to technologies and now i am asking your opinion that what you will suggest one thing state should do may i ask you such a question yes uh, i i would like to one, ask one the line leaders. one line uh, like uh, a okay. lawyer okay uh to make a plan b if uh, things will go wrong <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is his plan b i, I mean <laughs> I, i mean they should uh, make some plan in a global scale for example if artificial intelligence uh, tomorrow will threat us uh, something like as uh, today today i had a case in speak. court <laughs> Think Today about I their it. children. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, you should be you should be like a law law lawyer. You should you should tell your whole story in one line. <laughs> I mean, in a uh, uh, in uh, in the court in the courtroom, uh, some some lawyers, if judge ask them that, "Sto uh, suchilas." they start from the very beginning this happened this happened this happened this happened and by the time they come to the main point judge has already you know lose his interest into the matter so always start from your first concern so that's why i said that one line uh, okay they should uh, prepare a group of people uh who will tomorrow save all the human kind for example they they could uh, start the new generation in the mars or example or for example save us from a a threat tomorrow like that group of scientists okay may okay. one one person more anyone else start to find exoplanet yeah uh, what about all of others what about this uh, akmaro marmura uh, mushtari uh, i think uh, the scientists and uh, the politicians and uh, uh, other kirsan uh, munisa other people that uh, specialized in the Angina. some specific spheres should uh, make uh, some plans that uh, the recent technology or uh, the technologies uh, which uh, will be available in the foreseeable future uh, e- e- uh, may be threatening or very useful and uh, they should uh, make categories about this uh, and they look uh, this the technologies in all the spheres Okay. Deeply, I think. Yes, It's there can be number of questions. Uh, can, it will be useful uh, or uh, very damaging in the future. Apart from this, uh, the government should uh, make some restrictions uh, to people uh, uh, 
to uh, not to use technologies uh, to more than usual. Anyone, I anyone else? One or two can, technologies. Can anyone else uh, answer to this question? I mean, those who didn't speak up till now. Sangeeta, oh? Munisa, Kirsan. Excuse me, doctor. Yes. What is your opinion about that? Let What's me ask from let me ask from some of these who are not speaking, or they are just enjoying. I didn't finish it. I I I I told you to finish in one line, but you are uh, finishing and finishing and finishing. <laughs> oh my, I, I okay, so there points. can be number of questions, the number of answers. Yes, so we yes, everyone yes. can have its own first preference or second or third preference. Yes, maybe I can, maybe I. Teacher. Yes. Uh, can I answer to this, this question? Yes, yes, please. Who is this new um, one? If the lawyer, I would propose. Yes, study. Uh, as lawyer, I would propose the creation of laws that would regulate the field of super intelligence, uh, because I think uh, with the development of this uh, technology, this. Uh, like uh, super intelligence, uh, there will be rights and duties and responsibilities for the parts. Yes. as um, robots and humans. I, I as a uh, you know, technology law expert, I can say to the government that start teaching technology law in the universities, for example. Yes, because it is also something which yes. is required. Anyways, we will, we will continue. I will, we, uh, we don't have much time for discussion. Software is eating up the world. You will just uh, Google this and you will find this article which says software is eating up the world. That uh, in uh, 2011, there was a prediction that uh, there are so many software. Now already one decade has passed. It is already 2021. And we know that uh, software has eaten up the world. Everywhere, everything is software. You can just imagine anything and there will be a software related to this in in any of its dimensions each company is becoming a software company Me, means we are introducing technology i am giving lecture here from pakistan to the students in uzbekistan by using this technology means university has become a software movies and tvs books music medicine telecom retail oil and gas agriculture means it is physically possible for us that surgeon chirurg is sitting in pakistan and he can do operation by using internet techno uh, one computer high speed internet and a robot in new york who is operating on a real person means it is not a sci-fi it is something which is happening this is called as telemedicine or in telemedicine it is telesurgery means surgeon is in one part of the world and the patient is in the other part of the world and he can do the surgery by using robots so what yeah. is it about software that lends itself to such creative destruction creative destructions means Software is good. Software is destroying everything, but software itself is good. What is something inside software which is creating this creative destruction? We are not using certain technologies because advanced technologies have emerged, which are called as emerging technology. Now, this is a statistics, small statistics. Uh, at the end of 19th century, 19th century is not, not too old in terms of history of uh, agriculture. So yeah. at the end of the 19th century, over 90% of Americans worked in agriculture and today only 2%, only 2% people are working in medicine. Oh, sorry, agriculture. Yes. Yeah. And these are some old journals, uh, how to say, the front page photos, which showed like uh, 
30 years, 40 years, and 50 years ago, they were talking about that the softwares and technologies will cause a damage to our job market. And it happens today, yes? Technologies in accounting agency, previously, if uh, in your school days, you might have seen, I don't know how old are you, but uh, maybe just six or seven years ago, all the accounting used to be done by using uh, different types of booklets, books, formulas. It was very manual process, means you have to open files, you have to check the bills, uh, and uh, you have to, you know, pravriyat, uh, different types of, um, you know, receipts. But now everything is digital. I mean, software has eaten up this industry, which was called as audit industry or finance in general. All of these financial companies, the big financial uh, consultants, they are providing these services and mostly they are relying on software, even though they have very well qualified and sophisticated lawyers, consultant, economist, but still most of their work rely on the software. And ATM machine is not something new. The first ATM machine was invented in 1964, which is almost uh, half century before we started automating the, pro, pro, the, pro, the profession of accounting. Means in 1964, in certain part of the world, we didn't need Bugaltria because there were ATM machines. Means 50 years ago, in certain part of the world, Bugaltar had lost its job because there was an ATM machine. We pony Yes, yeah, yeah, And why you die when I ask uh, we pony Lida? You are like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or you are thinking too much. <laughs> Anyways, how do we control the AI? What happens if it gets out of the control? This is the machine Zadania. So create super intelligence is the question which we are talking from the previous class. And today we are going to talk about create super intelligence that shares our values. These are two different things. We can create technologically advanced super intelligence, which is easy. But if we talk about super intelligence who should listen us and follow our value system might be very difficult. We need to do this before we let the genie out of the bottle. Means if super intelligence comes, if super intelligence comes out of the bottle or inside the world, I mean like terminators, and there is no moral code installed into this terminator, it will be a problem. That's why you and me and other lawyers should start their work right now. Now we are going to start the second part of our lecture, which is about uh, uh, three technologies, which are emerging technologies. There are a number of technologies. There are so many technologies, but these are some of the main technologies. That's why I have chosen them. The first of these is called as uh, augmented reality. We have already, uh, you know, talked uh, for one hour. If you need break you can you can take break or if you don't need we can continue it's up to you because in the first lecture some people asked me that there was there was no break i mean do you need break we can stop for five minutes if you don't need we can continue because for me it's normal routine i usually give long long lectures for me it's not a problem if you need break for five minutes, we can do a break. Let's start or let's continue, I see. Okay. So the technology which, the first technology which I'm going to talk is augmented reality. Have you heard about this augmented reality? No. No, I, I heard about the virtual reality. 
virtual reality or augmented reality and mixed reality yes so virtual reality is when uh, you imagine and augmented reality is is when you interact it is my understanding of this but i will uh, tell you this that in many central asian countries we are already working about uh, on uh, augmented reality there are a number of uh, incentives which are taken by different countries for example this is an example of uh, kazakhstan they are using these uh, virtual reality tools in their schools and uh, i know that in uh, uzbekistan also some people are working on augmented reality on a very serious level and uh, uh, there is a news about uh, uzbekistan that uh, virtual reality digital center will be opened in uzbekistan very soon i don't know if it is open now or not but this is a case which i want to discuss with you have you heard about this case maybe you have saw seen this case on internet no so mm. what happened in this case there was uh, this lady and her uh, her daughter dochka umirla and the korean scientist they made this virtual reality tool with these uh, prichat keys with these gloves and she could see her daughter and she could even interact with her daughter did you understand yes real interesting so this is the, this is the news this is the news you will click on this when i will share this you will go you will go to this link and you will watch this i i don't want to show this because it is very emotional and it takes time to open and then but you can see this and when this happened they made this software and they facilitated the lady to interact with her daughter who Uh, died a couple of years ago there were number of morals and ethical and legal questions that is it right for us to organize these sorts of meetings pata mushta in future this will be used for negative purposes i uh, are you still there with me yes yes, yes of course i don't want to be disrespectful but i have lived in central asia for 10 years and i know many part of the central asia there are people who are living on the mountains or at a very far place places de dushki babushki who still think that leelan leelan is alive or garbachov is alive because they have no information about outside world so yes yes unfortunately so imagine imagine if someone from here tashkent goes to a remote part of uzbekistan and shows to this tedushki babushki this virtual reality tool and in this virtual reality tool the garbachov is asking this babushka to give all the zolata to this person is it <laughs> Oh, oh, nice idea, business. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I don't know if cool it was a right, right example or not. It is being recorded, but I couldn't think about uh, the more, even more better example than this. <laughs> but we, we, you understood this. You understood my point. What sort of point I am yes, making? Yes. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's why we need to. Uh, regulate this but this is even interesting what yes? do you mean what, what 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 did you want to say by this that uh, we can rule those people who um, just we can rule those people yes who have no information about technology or if we don't have regulations about technology then uh, and uh, for example you know previously there were no regulations about drones you could freely bring drones in one country but now there are very strict regulations for import and export of drones because there are so many misuses of drones so that's why 
the point which i am making since the beginning of this lecture is that government should take incentives and it is beneficial for technologists as well if he needs investment he can take investment from the government and can make government as a stakeholder and then government will make laws about this so technology should be regulated because if technology is not being regulated there are certain challenges and i gave you the example of one of the challenges now this is an interesting example have you heard about this second life second life is a virtual reality game on internet you can make your avatar inside the game for example you are natalia and in the other world which is on internet you can become um, what you want to become you can become uh, lady gaga and uh, you can make your own life there and you can uh, do everything whatever you are doing uh, as a individual in an other planet means you can go to job you can you can get up early in the morning you, you can meet with the samandar you can you you are doctor in this life in other life you can become an architecture and the interesting thing is that okay, people are but in this case who will in this case who will support you in your real life who will feed you who will clean you if you will spend all your life in this you yourself sometime your avatar sleeps and you get up sometime you sleep and your avatar <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are playing PUBG. You know, PUBG. You are talking about absolutely fantastic thing. PUBG, PUBG. You, you know, PUBG. absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And That's people, awesome. and people, uh, and we are talking about people who have who have problems with their heads, actually. Yes. So the PUBG, I have seen many people. I personally know them who play PUBG for forty forty hours straight in groups. They play video games. Anyways, come to this problem. Uh, come to this uh, second life. So what happens? It happens that uh, you make something, and then someone uh, maybe uh, you know do some sort of damages to you. What sort of damages are uh, they are doing? Uh, there have become number of cases. For example, there was a person who was an uh, architect, and he made uh, he made a house. and there was another person who copied this design so this person who was the original owner of this house made a claim that the second person has infringed his copyright and he went to the real court i mean conflict happened inside the game but both of them they went to the real court mean their second life was impacting their first life but this was the question of law did you understand yes yes yeah and uh, what happens and i don't know you go and search on internet ah, and then okay okay it's about... stupid so you can do buying and selling on inter... inside your second life you can do so many things and and then this can impact on your this life because in certain games i i don't play games uh, in certain games you are playing games and you can make money and this money comes to your bank account and you can go to atm and you can withdraw your money there are actual financial transactions happening in these virtual worlds yes 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 you know and then there are number of questions related to this for example in certain games you go or uh, you you can see even on instagram you can see that uh, people are uh, uh, you know killing pe people and uh, killing animals and many environmentalists or uh, for, you know environmental science activists and uh, human rights activists and animal rights activists they say that uh, it is the violation of the animals rights uh, it is the violation of environment uh, so we shouldn't do this i mean so many new types of case laws are emerging for example you make a video game in this video game uh, 
you have to cut the trees and there is a environmentalist or uh, the lawyer who fights for the rights of the trees or the environment can file a case on you that you are violating the environmental rights yes 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 they claim so did you see this video in which uh, when there was an election between trump and um, what is her name what is her name hillary clinton Hillary Clinton, there was a video which became viral on internet. If you will go on YouTube and you write drunk Hillary, you will find this video. What happened in this video, it seems that she is drunk. And many people claim that it was, it was because of the augmented reality. It was not the real uh, Hillary Clinton and it was done to distort the image of Hillary Clinton. Uh, okay. Yes. Now coming to the example of what about others? Are, are they still with me? We have 16 people and there are only two, three people who are saying yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> what about Sangina? Are you there? Just say yes. Don't say anything else. Munisa? Kirsan? Yes, I'm here. Ziada? Yes. Okay. Don't, don't uh, participate, but when I say yes, then you should say yes, no. Okay? It motivates me that other people are listening. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So, let's talk. Keep going. Um, Your lectures are really interesting. But no, I don't think so, because no one is participating in discussion. No one is speaking anything inside the group. And it is only interested to me, yes. Okay, let's continue. So now this is the final topic in augmented reality and then we will move to the other, other part, okay? So what if this augmented reality act as your agency? Agency is something which we discussed in previous lecture also against why, yes? And it happened in history. For example, we have dogs. We use these dogs for bringing parcels. They can go to the sh shop and they can bring, you know, the shopkeeper uh, will read the letter and uh, then he will give these things to the dog and dog will bring it to you. There are some dogs which are used by, uh, you know, old people. Uh, uh, they are very helpful and they bring different types of things. And, you know, pigeons, pigeons, this patitsa, I don't know what is it is called as... Um, in Russian language, I don't know. But this is used, this was used, I don't know if still people are using for uh, letters. You can write a letter, then you can put it here and the, you can uh, just uh, let it go and it will reach on its de destination. I don't know how. <laughs> yes, so these, yeah. these pigeons and these, so there are number of laws, there are number of uh, cases which have been reported related to these types of agencies. Welcome to our VIP customers. It's so great to be here. <laughs> we at Huawei have three areas. 5G is on, innovation inspiring new growth, and AI enabling intelligent operations. Our friendly staff are here to assist with any questions and are a wealth of information. <laughs> Hello, sir. You look awfully like some meaner CEO. Mr. Bokar, are you a... Oh, my. Is that really you? Welcome to Huawei Group. So this is actual advertisement I downloaded from uh, uh, from the YouTube. Titan the robot. You can find more videos about it. Uh, so isn't it uh, threatening or it is interesting? I mean, do you want these types of uh, highly sophisticated? Uh, you know what what it what happened in this video? This robot went to one person, and he said that. Yeah, he recognized that person. Yeah. Yes, you said you are you. Yes. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, you are walking on the street and someone comes and say that 
Munisa Priviyat. <laughs> <laughs> and you say that who, who is this and this person this robot is connected to maybe your um, passport data yes who knows and maybe this robot comes and and hold you from your neck and kills you because someone has feed this robot like this yes uh, who want to say something no Okay. Yeah. It's very dangerous for our everyday life. Yeah, it is very helpful as well. Okay. If you, uh, if you, rec if it uh, recognizes you, uh, and for this reason, it uh, knows lots of things about you, and it's dangerous for your personality and your future. But we can use them as a uh, consultants in the banks or in the markets in the shops. There are lots of pros and cons. Okay, I am not, I am skipping these two topics. You will read it by yourself because they are they are too much philosophy. <laughs> I don't want to take risk to discuss it here because I uh, they are very interesting, but they are uh, very rough top. Too much into legal theory. Too, but read it by yourself. Okay, this is the next technology, which is five um, G technology. Uh, and I told you that there is something which is called as quantum computing and 5G. People are talking about 5G and there are certain, certain people who are experimenting on 6G. <laughs> Means 5G haven't arrived in certain part, in many part of the world, but still, but already people are working on 6G. So in future, now listen this line, because after 20 years, when you will come into this field, when this will become reality, you will remember me. So listen to this line. When quantum computing, quantum computing will mix with 6G, there will be revolution in which who human will be much inferior than super intelligent. I mean, when quantum computer will be equipped with 6G technology, it will be something which will be out of control. Means humans will leave far behind. And this is something which I showed in the last class that at present we have made a computer core i9 or even advanced which is much more sophisticated as compared to the brain of insect or equal to the brain of mouse. But in next coming decades, two or three decades, we will have a computer which will as sophisticated as a human brain, okay? So the next technology is 5G and internet of thing. Have you, have you heard about uh, internet of thing? Let me show you this video and let's see if it if it opens or not. Let me open this and then I will show you. Okay. Unfortunately, it is not opening. <laughs> but but you can see this. You can see this uh, when I will share the slides. Hello. Oh, okay, don't worry. Yes, yes, we are here. Yes, we are following. Let me try once again. It, 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 it looks should... like smart home or how it's called, clever home, smart home. It looks like this. No, it, there was uh, there was something more also. Let's let's not work. Let's not do this because then I will touch to some wrong button and everything will be. <laughs> you will you will see this by yourself. Okay, so five G technology. What what is five G technology? We had one G, then there was two G, then there was three G. 4G and 5G. <laughs> I mean, the matter is of speed, speed. 
the 5G technology is very fast in terms of downloading operating speeds, yes? So all of these Gs means they are wireless communication. So how quickly you can transfer data from one place to another depends on the speed, okay? So 5G is very fast. Internet of thing is that everything around you, it is connected with 5G internet, yes? In Tashkent, the concept of Tashkent city, you, all of you, I think, have already been to the Tashkent city, yes? So in Tashkent yes. city, the original concept was that they wanted to make it equipped with the internet of things. But their uh, security system is also based on, I think, internet of things. But they didn't install internet of things in everything. But the concept is that everything should be connected to internet. You get up early in the morning, uh, the coffee maker knows that you have gotten up and it makes the coffee. Then the washroom in the washroom, the, the heating system knows that you have, uh, you are going to come there and the water becomes warm. Then your car knows that where you want to go and it automatically finds a sophisticated route and takes to your office. When the door sees that you are coming, it opens automatically. So these things are uh, internet of things. I mean, when everything is connected to internet, we say that this is internet of thing, okay? Yes. Yes, this is something which, which someone asked me in previous class, bio boast, boast. Bio boats mean the uh, ro robots, uh, the certain part of this uh, robot is it's biological. Different. Some components are biological components and some components are physical, uh, like metallic. So just imagine that this bio board is uh, equipped with the 5G technology. It, it, how many things it can do? It can, it can do so many things. And that many things it can do, that many challenges will be there. Da? Yes, of course. As you said, Elon Musk wanted to integrate the chips. <laughs> yes, like this that. is something which is happening already. Yeah. Uh, this you have seen. That it has become very famous in Scandinavia, in uh, Finland, Sweden, Denmark. People are doing this. You can install this small chip in your hand, and then you can use this chip as your uh, ATM card for entering into the bus, uh, for paying for something, for opening the door, yes? The husband can monitor his wife, and wife can monitor where my husband is going. <laughs> so everything is possible now. So Can we use it uh, as a memory card? You know, uh, you, yes, you can use it for anything. A friend of mine, she lives in Moscow. Hmm. Yes. A friend of mine, she lives in Moscow and um, she's a nutritiologist. And she has a special chip in her hands which uh, measures her blood pressure, her analysis, blood analysis. And when I found out about the, 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 this fact, I just said, oh, you're crazy. Because for us, it is a little bit weird to wear such chips inside your body. But for some people, it has become a part of their, you know, everyday life. And, Excuse uh, me, what, but, uh, doctor, what will be if something goes wrong? For example, who will be uh, stand in the court? Who will uh, take the responsibility? Is the one who made the chip or who utilizes the chip? I, I don't know. You should think about this yourself. That's why I am I am posing <laughs> okay. questions. I am I am you know in, well, the the peddlers. You know the peddlers. Those who sell uh, the narcotics. Snachalani uh, pradayut besplatna. And when uh, you become addicted to this, then they then they you know charge money from you. So I am like this. I am just giving you taste of a little bit a little bit of everything so that you should go and you should investigate yourself. So I think oh, okay. uh, Thank you. Uh, there may be uh, some contracts uh, when you receive these chips with a company. 
and uh, you will be persuaded uh, uh, to the deaths maybe or some problems when you receive the chips and the company uh, never to take the responsibility on his shoulders because uh, there's a con contract that you are persuaded for all the things that will happen in the future by these chips. It is negotiable. Usually we just stick, usually we say yes, but uh, all the contracts, they are negotiable. We just don't do, we just don't do, but the matter, matter is of your own standard and preferences, yes? But any, anyways, this is something which you should think. My, my task is to create problem. <laughs> Your task <laughs> is to find solution. <laughs> so many people are now saying, you have heard, I mean, in your neighborhood, you can think uh, in Pakistan, it is, it is a common topic for discussion. Many people are saying that uh, this coronavirus vaccine, the vaccine, they want to inject this vaccine so that uh, they can monitor you. And, uh, you know, in, in a certain part of uh, Pakistan where there are very religious people, they are uh, saying that uh, this corona vaccine is haram because they are using uh, the blood or I don't know what, what is of uh, uh, the, the swine or the dogs or we don't know from which material this is being used and how you can uh, inject it inside your body and these sort of things. So, I mean, this is something which is called a societal impact of technology. And uh, uh, all the technologies, they don't have only positive impact on society. Many technologies, they have negative impact as well. And this is, this is the question which we are discussing. Okay. 5G technology in Central Asia, I have given these two, three slides. You can read them. The work is happening in Central Asia. You know, by the way, my company, my company, IMO Innovation Consultants, we have recently uh, introduced a booklet. We have introduced uh, a research paper, you can say, in which we have uh, discussed about uh, 5G technology in Central Asia. We have just highlighted the developments which are happening in five of these Central Asian countries, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. If you are interested, you can just Google it, 5G technology in Central Asia, you can write my name, and you can find this uh, research paper or report, and you can download. If you are interested to know that, where your country is standing in terms of 5G. Similarly, we have published a report on AI, AI in Central Asia, 5G in Central Asia, if you are interested, you can Google it and you can uh, find find about this. Okay, Internet of Tort is where interest, final topic is in the Internet of Thing. I told you Internet of Thing is that when Internet is installed in everything and Internet of Tort is, you know, Tort Law, Tort, Tort Law. So it is possible that these things, they have conflict among themselves. For example, uh, your uh, uh, the uh, coffee machine makes coffee, and uh, the you know heating system heats up the water. So, but you drink you drink coffee, but uh, the heating system you don't use the heating system. So the heating system becomes angry with the coffee system. It can say that it is the usual routine that whenever you make coffee, I should boil the water. Yes. So there can be a conflict among those things as well. For example, your Khaladilnik thinks that Kartoshkas have ended and Khaladilnik automatically orders the Kartoshka from Kurzinka. But when the Kartoshka arrives, you don't want to buy them because you didn't order. It is your Khaladilnik which has ordered. So there can be conflict among these things as well. Did you understand? Yes, yes. Yes, interesting point. So how many contracts you will do? 
you can do contract between but for two... what in when this technology for what in when this technology if it brings wrong kartoshka from karzinka seems impossible the normal feeding inside the khaladilnik is that whenever kartoshkas have uh, becomes uh, you know finish uh, they you should order them from uh, uh, you know supermarket but this time you don't want because you don't have money and you don't accept the delivery yes but the delivery has arrived and then the kurzinka say that give us the payment you say that i didn't okay, but... yes no okay i got it but in this case a person should somehow agree his orders with his uh, smart house and his smart technologies he has you you don't need to become emotional about this particular example it is just for the sake of uh, explaining <laughs> that there can be a conflict between different uh, things because i couldn't think about any any other example yes but i just wanted to make my point that no, but I, i just mean that this technology this technologies should be agreed with a person's uh, wishes no. and his uh, <laughs> Yes, yes. Yes, then because uh, our our refrigerator can't order kartoshka if we are on a diet for example. It can't buy cakes if we have a diabet. I mean in this way it should be a great maybe the chip inside your body thinks that today your uh, sugar level is low and today you can order uh, something which is not of your routine but it can make you happy so let's order uh, a cake i mean that told or the conflict among things will it's arise like a bad husband the the conflict will arrive when they are following the law installed in them they are strictly following the law for example when the coffee machine will work at the same time the water should be boiled because it is the law in this case if the person breaks his routines there will be conflict between two things yes or the second thing when both of these things which are equipped with internet takes autonomous decision by themselves they start thinking by themselves as i gave the example of uh, this uh, cake that one thing thinks that today your health is much better as compared to the other days that's why you can eat something sweet Yes. You know the thing which we are doing today. Tosh to mi svornia absujdaim. These are not questions on the tables of many lawyers. Mnogi daje ni khatiya du mat abe tam. They think that oh, what is what 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 a stupid discussion is going on. Yes, <laughs> but. <laughs> but you will see you will see with me and then we will remember each other yes that these things will happen anyways yes. 5g 5g final topic in uh, 5g then we will go to smart contract let me see the time yes we have enough time hopefully we will we will be able to cover this so this is a this is a sketch how the 5g is being provided there are there is a, the space the 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 uh, outside of uh, uh, our world you can say that it is space there are different layers of of course so these ships they they provide 5g internet for example elon musk has thrown small small satellites uh, and these satellites they provide internet uh, it is planning that, elon musk is planning that by the spacex they will uh, you know provide internet to the world so just imagine that this ship which is providing 5g to your country yes 
this 5G is being provided to your country, but this ship at the same time is doing spying or espionage. Yes, it is possible. Yeah, it's possible. It is, it is championship. Yes. What, what is uh, espionage? Espionage. 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 Yes. Espionage. So apparently, some country sells you 5G technology and they say that our ships will supply 5G technology, but they are providing 5G technology, but at the same time, they are doing uh, championage. Yes. So that's why yeah. we should have our own uh, regulations. Smart contracts, smart contracts, Omni contract is becoming famous in Uzbekistan. It is based on blockchain technology. Yes. Yeah, so, Bitcoin likes it. Yes, let let's let me see how many slides are there in smart contract. Uh, this smart contract is a topic which I want to discuss in detail. And today I think that if I will discuss, we will not be able to finish this on time. And uh, at this point, you have already lost your interest into this. So let me come to this. Smart contract we will discuss in some of our classes when we have free time, because it is very important topic. That's why I want to discuss it in the beginning of some class, okay? That's why I am skipping this. Yeah, okay. So these are the questions you will do by yourself. These are the questions which we will discuss in our group, in our Telegram group, the second slide, okay? We can see. Sorry? We couldn't see the previous slide. No, I will share this inside the group, in the Telegram group. I will share this. Okay. This, this is something. And this is to discuss inside our Telegram group. These six questions. Previous question, you know, you didn't discuss Babshe inside the, uh, even though I gave you some props, I wanted you to, some dis, uh, to discuss, I gave you some ideas, but you didn't discuss. Then I thought that maybe they were too broad, too journal. So that's why now uh, these six questions are very, five questions are very sophisticated, okay? They are very targeted, very, uh, you know, you, you, you should have your opinion on this. So you can discuss them inside your groups. So what do you, what do we want society to look like in future? It really depends on these three questions. These three questions which I posed in my first uh, class at the end of the lecture. Today also we try to discuss and again we are continuing this for the next class as well. That how can we use law to incentivize AI or any other technology? And how do we use law policy to regulate the use of new technologies? And finally, how we can use AI or technology to improve law? Okay. So now let's come to the blockchain and after that i will leave you so what is basically blockchain blockchain is a sophisticated system in which uh, first let me ask you do you have any idea about blockchain who can tell me what is blockchain hmm? i know what is it but i can't explain have any one of you heard about blockchain? I thought, may, you know, I didn't, in, now I'm watching and I'm I'm feeling, uh, you know, that I, sh I should talk about the technology itself. I thought that maybe you should have some idea about smart contract and blockchain because they are becoming very famous in Uzbekistan. So uh, let, me, let me discuss this topic in some other class. This was the final topic I wanted to discuss here. But in some other class, I will talk about blockchain technology and then blockchain law, okay? Because now you don't have any idea at all and I, I don't uh, have material to start it from zero, okay? So now we have 15 minutes. If you have any questions or you want to discuss something, we can do this and then we can 
we can conclude okay yeah blockchain uh, this the for the next class yes in in some of the classes because it is very interesting topic and we need to you know uh, we need to discuss it in detail yes now if you have any question uh, we can discuss it right now or if you have, have any questions no questions can we leave? can we leave yes yes it's up to you you can leave whenever you want we are almost done like two hours we have we have done yes so if you if you don't have any questions we can we can leave and then we will discuss in the group for our next class uh, i don't think that there is a need to have a class every day until unless you don't do your reading or we don't discuss this because the purpose is not to complete this course the purpose is to learn something from this course and unfortunately uh, sorry to say i am not seeing all of you taking interest into this i want some discussions i want people reading from the material which i have provided and discussing in the group asking me questions then i will you know proceed to the next topic if we are not doing this i don't think that there is a need of this course yes are you agree? yes yes i agree with you okay, okay, i couldn't i i couldn't i couldn't fully make my reading because some links didn't open by the way you can just google the topic if the link has expired you can just google the topic and you can find it on an other link usually the journalistic article articles written by the journalists they are available on different websites in the different you know many people rewrite them many people review them the main idea is that when you find an article you should have an idea about the story it can be written by one person person a b c d but you should have a contextualized understanding of this topic that's the only concern you don't have to read the exact specific topic okay as far as uh, the academic articles are concerned they usually stay on the same link if you don't find then you can just simply google them so let's do it like this tomorrow no i tomorrow i don't want to have class if it is like this so let's do your readings let's work on the questions think about them discuss in the group and then we will proceed to the next class yes because we this this course is